<laughs> point. Got, got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, oh, so so on the bottom of that sheet, it's got some, some uh, contacts, people I can call if I have a question or a concern. It's got the names of two different women. So I call this woman uh, and I called her on May 5th, actually. So, oh man. So, on May 5th, I needed the friend to make another store run. And the, the sheet that I have from May 3rd, that's what I forgot to mention. The sheet that I have from May 3rd actually says that a friend, family member, or case manager can go to the store for me. So, this was generated on April 30th, the same day that I was told only a case manager can go to the store for me. And even as the person was telling me that, the rule was being changed to where a case manager uh, or friend or family member could actually go for me. So DHS actually had not told the case managers that it was their duty to go to the store for anyone. Uh, and that represents a bit of dysfunction, which is what this video is about. <laughs> so how do you give the case managers a duty, not tell the case managers what their duty is? When I call the case manager, she says, oh, that's not my job. I don't do that. You know, and, and so then on May 3rd, I get this document that was generated on April 30th. And it says that a case manager, a friend or family member member can go so I didn't need the case manager to go for me and neither did I need this friend to uh, pretend to be a case manager or to uh, play any kind of tricks if you will <laughs> but that that said he didn't he didn't have to do anything under the table he was now allowed to bring me my stuff um, and, and so Oh man, and it's getting to be a really long uh, video here. Let me see where I was. Okay, so so I had the second store run done on done on May fifth. Didn't get any beer that time, and uh, later on May fifth, I, I actually received another rule sheet which would be this one right here uh, the first page is actually identical second page is identical third page is actually different and the, the, the third page actually does not have the times that, that someone can bring stuff to me. So the, the previous version of, of the rules actually had several times laid out. And both of these copies, both of these sheets were actually made on the same day. Both were made on April 30th. So the copy I received on May 3rd has down at the bottom that when you bring stuff, you have to only bring it between 2 and 4 p.m. on Sunday or Thursday, or between 8 and 9 p.m. on Tuesday. And, and so, you don't have a, a really big window of time in which to bring stuff for somebody who's being quarantined. By the way, if you bring it to the hotel, what the method was that uh, someone downstairs would take it and then they'd put on their face mask and their gloves and they'd bring it up to my room uh, and, and that was the established method for a while that's actually how they deliver meals I get three three free meals per day and that's how they're brought up the people have on face uh, face mask or face shields I should say and uh, and gloves and they have gowns and they bring the stuff up to me the food and that's what they did for these two uh, deliveries now, when I received my stuff on May 5th, the woman who brought it to the door 
she she says uh that'd be it you can't get any more stuff from the store people have been taken advantage by by getting beer so little did i realize that me getting beer was a problem you know i just assumed by me being an adult by me being in a hotel being under ordinary hotel rules it would be fine uh and in the rule sheets that were both generated on April 30th and one given to me on the third one given to me on the fifth both of them do have some identical stuff although there is at least one difference and in both cases it says okay is my stay at the hotel like an ordinary hotel stay and the answer is yes to a certain extent your meals are delivered by staff your medical needs are addressed via telephone and door services as required and you are provided laundry and cleaning services one time each week uh, and in another part of the rules it says no drugs use of alcohol highly discouraged it doesn't say it's against the rules up it's highly discouraged so on the 5th, I was basically told that getting beer was more or less a violation of the rules or people were taking advantage by getting beer that was, or, or taking advantage by getting alcohol. Those were the exact words. Uh, and, and so they said that no more store runs would be allowed. Uh, after she said that is when, is when I received the second copy of the rules, which still allows for store runs but then on May 8th I got a third uh, set of rules so in this in this case it's only two pages long they took a lot of stuff out uh, and they actually highlighted a couple of things so the highlight there says meals will be brought to you three times a day and they got a couple more things highlighted on page two. And like I said, they cut a lot of stuff out because they went from three pages down to two pages. Uh, but another highlighted area, it says, well, I have to order my meals. And the answer is no, while in isolation and quarantine, uh, three meals daily are provided to you and no clients are allowed to order food or delivery to the hotel. The other highlighted area says, can I request snacks or drinks anytime? It says, unfortunately, we do not provide room delivery any time of the day. If you need a snack or a drink, your request must be made prior to 10 p.m. Uh, daily. If, if the item is available, we will try to provide it to you. Uh, okay, so that's it. Now, they're no longer allowing anything to be brought to you even though they do have a process in place to transfer it from the person on the outside to the person in quarantine they have face shields they have gloves they have gowns uh and so that of course raises some issues because i didn't learn the rules concerning quarantine until i was brought here to the hotel library in northeast dc so I didn't realize, you know, that I wouldn't be able to get anything brought to me. Uh, at the time, I could have stuff brought to me, but I didn't realize that they were going to change the rules to where I could have nothing brought to me. Uh, if if uh, I hadn't already had those two store runs on May 1st and May 5th, I'd have really been screwed. I'm a cigarette smoker. I came in here with a partial pack. Uh, I was able to get some get a carton brought to me before I ran out. I had the presence of mind to bring my laptop with me and of course my phone uh, and some other things. I brought a power strip. I, I brought enough clothes, uh, more, more than enough actually. And uh, all I needed to get from the store were some uh, snack items and cigarettes and beer, but, but uh, if somebody comes into quarantine not realizing that once they walk through those doors downstairs that they can't have anything at all brought to them, neither can they transfer anything out. 
then they're, go they're going to be really screwed. So I had somebody call me while I was here and say, uh, can I get $20 from you? Uh, the same way that people brought stuff up to you, including beer, they, can, they, can they bring uh, the $20 down to me? And unfortunately, that was on May 8th. That was after the rules was made that nothing could be brought to me, nor could I send anything to anybody else. And, and so that's just an example of something that a person might need to do while they're in here. They may have an important card or what, whatnot in their wallet that they need to uh, transfer to somebody on the outside and they can't do that. Uh, they, they may realize once they get here that they forgot the charge cord for their phone and they can't get it. They can't have it dropped off. Um, so fortunately, I did bring everything I needed, especially my bank card, uh, and and I I was able to get what I needed. But now that my connection to the outside world has been cut off, I realize that other people who come after me may run into some very serious problems. Uh, so there's that. But what else? Now, when I leave here, I'll be returning to shelter. The person who contracted COVID-19 that I know, uh, he and I were near each other in the shelter. Our beds were about eight and a half feet apart. And uh, that's why I'm here in quarantine. Now, chances are when I see him again, he won't have COVID-19 and I don't believe I have it. But, um, I could find out that somebody else near me uh, has contracted COVID-19 and then I may end up right back in quarantine. Uh, so it's, it, it's kind of uh, crazy that I've been in the process of getting connected to housing for five and a half months, yet my case manager, I did ask her by the way, when I, as soon as I got in here, I called and I, I, uh, I spoke to her about bringing stuff to me from the store, which she says she doesn't do. But then I, I also asked her about expediting my housing so that when I get out of here, I don't have to go back to the shelter. She said that she can't do that. So I need to go back to the environment that got me here in quarantine in the first place. Uh, and, and let me see what else. So I looked up the prices for this hotel room. I already figured it was going to be about 200, a little more, and I was right. Uh, hotel Arboretum goes for $216 a night. And I, I will have been here for 10 days when I leave, if I leave tomorrow. And that's $2,160 spent keeping me in a hotel. Now, the, the government may have gotten the discount because they're, they're renting out the entire hotel. But even if they're only paying half of that, that's $1,080. Uh, I asked the nurse uh, some time ago if they were going to give me a COVID-19 test while I'm here. She said no. Uh, I learned on a recent newscast that you can pay $100 to order a COVID-19 test in PG County, Maryland, which is uh, right next door to D.C., so I'll assume that the test cost approximately $100 uh, on average. And so you're going to pay over $1,000 to keep me in a hotel, maybe $2,000 if you didn't get a discount. And then you're not going to pay $100 to give me a free COVID-19 test. Uh, it gets even crazier because... There are several places in D.C. where I can go to get a free COVID-19 test when I leave. And I will definitely go to one of those locations. Uh, what, what's really interesting is that the job I do, I do event rentals, tents, tables, chairs, porta potties, other things you use for outdoor events. And uh, we are, we're not doing a lot of events these days. We're actually not doing any events these days. But... We are still providing to construction sites, porta potties, that would be, 
and we're providing porta potties to other places as well. And some of our other customers are homeless tent cities. The government has ordered at least nine uh, porta potties for homeless tent cities. They ordered them from our company. Uh, even though we have hand wash stations, they ordered hand wash stations for the homeless from another company. Don't ask me why. But um, we're also renting porta potties and hand wash stations to the various uh, free COVID 19 test sites. They are tents that have been set up near hospitals and other locations. And because people are being tested in tents, you need porta potties because you don't have, you know, restrooms close enough. And so when I return to work and I go to service the porta potties at, at those different test sites, I'm going to stop by and ask for a test. And you would think that while they have me sitting here in quarantine for 10 days, they would have given me a free test like the one I can get when I leave out of here. Uh, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. So there's a lot of dysfunction there. Uh, oh, man. And I, I know I forgot at least one thing. Oh, I know what else I forgot. So when I called... Uh, I called one of the numbers on the rules sheet and I spoke to that woman and, and I, uh, oh man, what did I say? <laughs> oh, I, I, I was talking about uh, the, the issue of, of having stuff brought to me. It was before they made the rule against bringing anything to me. I received the rules sheet on May 3rd uh, and... At that time, I could still have stuff brought to me. Uh, and the friend who was going to bring stuff to me uh, had a question. Uh, and he says, uh, well, can I bring food items? I see the rule sheet that you texted over to me. And it says something about not bringing food. And I said, well, I think you misread it or misunderstood it. I, and I gave him my interpretation that you, you can't bring food from a restaurant, but you can bring uh, factory packed food from a store. Uh, he says, well, will you call and uh, check it out? And so I called and I said to the woman who was supposed to know all this stuff. Um, well, you know, what? what is the rule? Can I receive food? And she says, oh, you can't receive anything. And I said, well, I have a rule sheet in my hand. It says that I can receive food. It has your name as somebody who I can call for answers. Uh, and then she told me that she had never heard about that rule sheet being generated. She didn't know her name was on it. She didn't know her cell phone number was on it. And she didn't know that I could still receive stuff from the store at the time. So how does D.C. government put somebody's name on a sheet of paper as a point of contact if I need to ask any questions. They don't tell that person that their name and their cell phone number are being put on that sheet of paper. They don't tell the person what they would need to know in order to be able to answer questions for anyone who calls, okay? And and so I actually called her back a little while later and and I, and I had actually texted her a copy of the rule sheet the portion where her name appears and and the portion where it says that I can receive food. And I called her maybe a half hour or so after. And I said, you know, uh, have you? And she says, oh, oh, you can receive food now. And and I said, well, you received the rule sheet? And she says, no, I have what you sent me. So she learned the rule from what I sent her. She worked for the Department of Human Services I don't work for the Department of Human Services, and she learned from me about what her job was. <laughs> and so there's poor communication within the Department of Human Services. Uh, and then, of course, we have some other things that I brought up earlier about the dysfunction and how they, when we had 889 percent increase in homelessness from 2013 to 2014, the ICH decided not to have their regular annual conversation around what the change in uh, the homeless numbers meant. Uh, and so I know I've been going on and on for a while and I brought up 
a lot of the dysfunction uh, within DC government concerning homelessness. And they've played a lot of games over the years. I don't want to get into all the games they've played because this would be a two hour video. Uh, but just the fact that they wouldn't even have the conversation in 2014. And, and I have email proof of that. Um, that in and of itself says a lot. And now that I have this video going up, uh, it will help to indict DC government a year or two from now if they have a poor response to the anticipated increase in homeless people in DC. So let's see how it goes. And I'll stop there.